This is the gorgeous Salvia rubra, which is red sage, so quite a common garden plant, but it's also highly medicinal. Um, and it's well known, I suppose, for m mostly for um, night sweats and menopause. And for some women, sage works really well, and for other women, it doesn't work at all. So quite interesting. Um, it is phytoestrogenic, so it has estrogens in the plant. Um, so certainly for women at that stage in life, it can be useful um, to eat or take in the plant um, just as a culinary plant or take it medicinally um, to um, increase those phytoestrogens in the body, which is nice, alongside other herbs and foods which would be good for them at that same time, like uh, fennel or uh, parsley or garlic and foods like uh, legumes and chickpeas, lentils, um, and even rice and oats can be useful. So all phytoestrogenic foods, um, just like sage is. Um, but another thing it's mostly uh, used for, and what we mostly use it for as well, is for throat infections and sore throats. So everyone's kind of heard of uh, sage for sore throats, and it certainly is um, really good anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial herb. So. I do use it a lot um, as a tincture and as an uh, apple cider vinegar extract for um, things like laryngitis or pharyngitis or even glossitis or um, stomatitis in the mouth, um, gingivitis of the gums and the teeth, inflammation of the teeth as well, or ulcers or canker sores. So um, for those kind of mouth um, inflammations and infection, um, infections, it's really useful and I would actually tend to use red sage as a apple cider vinegar extract in those cases. So we do tincture too, um, but this is an apple cider vinegar extract of sage that um, I would have made a number of weeks ago, probably about three or four weeks ago now. So it's ready to strain and it's this gorgeous uh, red colour. Um, so it's really beautiful. Uh, but we do also um, make extracts from uh, just the normal uh, salvia officinalis, which is your green garden sage, which we have as well. Um, and this is, I'll show you in contrast, this is what a tincture of salvia officinalis is. So it's a very different colour um, and much more potent as a tincture, uh, but both of them would be really useful for those sore throat and throat infections and mouth um, infections that I was just talking about, gum diseases as well. Um, so you could use it, just um, take it internally as a tincture. Or what I like to do is um, get patients to actually gargle it. So apple cider vinegar makes a really, really nice gargle for mouth infections, gum infections, and for sore throats as well. Um, but the plant's really amazing. It's useful for um, colds and flus as a diaphoretic if you take it as a warm tea. Um, and it's also a very um, nice digestive plant. So useful for, it's kind of carminative, so it acts on the stomach and also the lower digestion to relieve any kind of um, discomfort there and it's also well known to uh, lower uh, blood sugar levels too, so really useful. Um, I also like to use either red sage or the other green sage, Salvia officinalis, um, in beauty products. So it's really nice, so a couple of the ways in which you can use it is, um, it is, as I said, it does, um, it is antiperspirant or anti, um, yeah, antiperspirant, so it does stop sweating and reduce sweating. So really nice to use in deodorants. So you can dry the plant and powder it um, and then use it in powder deodorants, which are really nice to make. Um, or you can use the essential oil as well in other types of deodorants. Um, and even just making a tea, so an infusion out of the leaves or actually making a hydrosol, distilling a hydrosol out of red sage can be really nice for um, um, to make a toner for kind of oily skins. So that's a really nice way to use it. And if you're into making powdered toothpastes, I'm not really into them, but if, I don't really like the feeling of them, but if you're into making powdered toothpaste, sage um, whitens the teeth. So you could again dry your sage and powder it and then add it into your powdered toothpaste as well. Um, and actually I'm avoiding this plant at the moment. You don't think because I'm sitting here, but I'm supposed to be avoiding sage at the moment um, because it is uh, contraindicated in pregnancy. And at the moment, actually I'm sitting amidst a number of plants that are contraindicated in pregnancy. So this one here is mugwort, which I would have done a video on before, and it's one of my favorite plants. And I really do miss taking that at the moment because I would indulge in mugwort almost every day as a tea. Um, so I'm missing that. And also this ruta, so this rue here, is also another plant contraindicated in pregnancy. And same here, this feverfew, this beautiful feverfew is just in flower now. Um, so I'm kind of sitting amongst all these um, plants that I shouldn't be really touching too much or sitting beside because they're quite aromatic. Like this rue is really pungent and same with the um, feverfew and this sage even is a really really aromatic plant. It's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, so I'm um, going to be avoiding it in pregnancy um, and uh, also 
I'm going to be avoiding it after pregnancy. So even the essential oil of sage, I would avoid using that too. So I do like to add it into deodorant because it is antiperspirant. But um, at the moment, I won't be putting that into my natural deodorants. And also, I won't be doing it for a good while because uh, sage is contraindicated in lactation as well because it actually is an anti-galactic herb, which means that it reduces breast milk flow. So that's not what you want. Um, and it's also... Um, uh, and reduces kapha. So in Ayurvedic medicine, um, it, the sage is a kapha reducing plant. And um, for an Indian mammy like myself, um, the whole aim of the game in pregnancy is actually to increase kapha. And the more you can increase and hold your kapha in pregnancy, the, they say, and it is true, um, you produce the kapha baby, which is the ultimate baby, <laughs> the kapha baby that sleeps all the time, eats really well. Um, and we managed to do that with Ronan Tilia. So hopefully with this baby it'll be the same. So um, I would be avoiding sage completely. Um, now if taking a little bit of food is fine, but if you were to take it as a tea regularly, or if you were to take it um, as a tincture or a mid even as an apple cider vinegar regularly, um, I would uh, say avoid that. So don't do that in pregnancy as well because it is contraindicated, but it also reduces that lovely caffeiness. Um, so there's some of um, the uses of sage, it has a million other uses, but definitely this plant here will be dried and powdered for some of the uses I just mentioned. Um, and also we'll probably be taking cuttings of it for the nursery because it's actually more popular um, than the green sage. We sell it more than that one. Um, and I think it's just because it's so stunning. It's actually quite a beautiful plant. So it hasn't even flowered yet, but we'll be taking um, cuttings from this plant um, yeah, over the next few days. So that's a little bit on salvia rubra, which is red sage. Thanks.